Well, hello and welcome here to Live Oak International. We are getting set for a jump-off competition here this afternoon. It forms part of the four-star program here at the event. $32,000 in the prize fund for this one and a jump-off format. So any tie after the first round means we will be going to a jump off against the clock and looking through that start list looking at what they have set out there as part of the course I think we will be having a jump off I think that's pretty much guaranteed and I think it'll be very very quick when we get there but some great sport on the way for you here this afternoon it's great to be live not only on FEI TV and Clip My Horse but also on YouTube and Facebook we're live on there and as always we're wanting you to be involved with the conversation so if you're on YouTube if you're on Facebook you can use the comments box below do let me know where you're watching from if you've got any questions any good luck messages for the athletes you can pop all that in the box below as well and I'll certainly be keeping an eye on those as we progress forward through uh, the competition here this afternoon but our athletes are out there in the warm-up they're making their final preparations and then we're going to see the first one come through in just a moment Olaf Peterson is our course designer he's an international level four course designer so he's an Olympic level course designer he builds all over the world we've seen him at championships and he put together a great test yesterday I'm sure we're about to see the same again but he's used pretty much every inch of this big expansive grass arena uh, that we have here at Live Oak International um, and it really is quite an event I don't know if you guys have been following it but not only do we have the four star international show jumping this morning we had our one star Grand Prix it was a super competition and aside from show jumping it doesn't even end there they've also got a top level uh, carriage driving here as well carriage driving a little bit like eventing so they had their, their dressage on the opening day they had the marathon today which is you know like their cross country and then tomorrow they've got their cones which should be like the show jumping and eventing so it's an exciting event to be running alongside as well. So there's so much going on and there's tons of great food and shopping and the atmosphere is pretty amazing from, you know, right at the start of the day in the very early morning all the way through till the, the last horse is gone. And, and after that as well with, you know, festivities and the odd party to enjoy here too. Uh, having a quick look on YouTube, uh, you guys are always great at getting involved. Uh, we've got Felda watching in Denmark. Uh, Alison is in sunny North Carolina. Tonto and Otto in Ireland. Carrot Stick Chronicles is in Michigan. Daniela's in Germany. Susan Womack says she's in Chicago and it's pretty windy there. I'll do more of those mentions in just a couple of seconds. But on screen now, we can see our start list and it's going to be Will Simpson who gets us underway as our Pathfinder. Gabby Rota in there as well. Kitty Dynan, be it Manly. Simon McCarthy, who won yesterday, of course, back with another one here. Andre Tima. There's a whole host of top talent coming forward in this jump-off competition. As I mentioned earlier, Olaf Peterson, our course designer, will take a look at what he has set in just a moment. First, though, we introduce you to our opening rider. It's Will Simpson and the nine-year-old by Grand Slam. This is Kaminko N for the United States of America. Will, of course, has won too many accolades to name. Olympic gold medalists, one of the best and most consistent riders for the US and now based right here in Ocala and this is a horse he's been bringing along for a couple of years now, you know, all the way up from a metre 20 up to the $100,000 National Grand Prix and now into, into four star as well. So let's take a look at what 
Olaf Peterson has designed for these athletes. So we start over this kind of red and white ox are quite square to get them underway at fence number one. Left-handed, then we kind of bend back round here to the vertical at two. It's a mainstream vertical. Slight left-handed bending line sends them down towards the, the live oak oxer at three. Very delicate fence at four. We might have to keep an eye on that one. I think that might be influential, that fence. As they land over that vertical, though, they're rolling back round towards the square oxer at five. Then we're back to the long side. This is a vertical to vertical line. Tiny delicate plank sitting on top. Related distance down to the Gold's Gym vertical at seven. And then very quickly, that oxer comes at you. It's square. There's a water tray underneath. Then we're thinking about the delicate vertical at nine. Related distance down to a very gymnastic triple combination. Oxer coming in, two strides vertical, one stride and vertical out through 10, A, B and C. Then we come back to the long side. Oxer there over the Lugana fence. Related distance down to the double. Vertical to Oxer, one non-jumping stride. And then the final fence brings him down towards this area. And he jumps clear. 73-27. That was a great start there. Time allowed at 80 seconds. So Olaf Peterson giving them a, a good amount of time to achieve the questions and tests that are out there on course today. 80 seconds time allowed. Will comes home in 73.27 and gives us that first clear round. I think we're going to have a jump off very quickly in this one today. With the height of these fences out there today, standing at about 1 metre 50. Could it be Gabriella Russer, though, that guarantees a jump off for us? Let's find out. She's got Castle OJ coming forward, the 11-year-old Irish sport horse gelding by Sligo Candy Boy. This is a horse with about five FEI wins on its record. One that Andrew Burns has had some good success with, but Gabby's had the ride for a couple of years. Oh, it's a little bit flat in there today. couple of early rails for Gabby and in a competition like this and with the amount of talent you know I think if you have one rail there's a possibility of picking up some some lower prize money but as soon as you have two rails it does become a bit academic so Gabby's now going to give this horse a nice ride use it as a bit of preparation to prepare for for future competitions and also to enjoy just getting to jump on the grass here as well it's a great arena Shame to have those early rails. It's kind of settled into a bit more of a kind of active rhythm now. Finishes up on the eight seventy two sixty two, and that was like a round of two halves. Just looked a little bit quiet, almost a slightly downhill to start with, and then Gabby kind of gathered everything together and then put in a good performance towards the end. So I know it's frustrating to have the, the rails, but she's certainly well prepped for the next time she's in the ring. Hi to Nila, who's also watching in Germany. We've got Lips in Italy. Uh, Rainiver is watching in Romania. Tonto says, I would like to wish everyone good luck. But we've got some great ones coming forward here. Hi to the old green there, uh, watching as well on YouTube. We'll take a look at Facebook in a second. If you're watching on Facebook Live, don't forget to hit that share button, tag your friends, share it to any equestrian groups that you're a part of as well. Let everyone know that they can enjoy the action here from Live Oak. Right, Coco Faith already with us and now underway there with Harley D, won by Spartacus. This is a partnership we've seen already compete at five star level this year. And it's a horse with some good experience. You know, we've seen Lauren Hoff jump this one. We've seen Vasco Flores ride the horse. But Coco's had the ride for about a year and a half now. It's been a great horse for her, actually. It's really helped her kind of moved up the ranks after you know, a real successful equitation and hunter career as a junior. 
And we've seen her jump at you know some some big big venues now. She had a top three finish last year here. Well, just have to take a bit of a check down this line, gets organised. It's a good reaction. Nicely out through there. You can see her really turning her head, using that upper body to help balance around the turns. Is this going to be our second clear and guarantee us a jump off? Down to the area, jumps that nicely, 75-39. All the way, Coco Faith for the USA, now alongside Will Simpson. That's the two clears we've had from the three gone so far here. Already, jump off guaranteed. That is a horse with a lot of scope, a lot of ability, very gymnastic through the distances. Nicely done. Hi to Hannah Butler, watching from a wet Scotland, where I'm from. I actually live in England now, a place called Southport, but I'm from Edinburgh originally. It's good to have you watching, Hannah. Linda Harris says, good afternoon from Ocala. Hope you're coming to join us over the weekend, Linda, if you're here. Angela says, um, when is the Five Star Nations Cup? Um, that's the League of Nations, Angela, I think you're referring to. It's not at this venue. Um, it's at the World Equestrian Centre, which is just across the road, and it's on next week. Uh, more questions and comments and stuff after we see Sarah Siegel now with Flintstone, another representative of Team USA. Been showing this horse for a couple of years. It's by Mr. Blue, this horse. Been jumping well so far. Had a top 10 finish down in Wellington in the four-star metre 40 division there. Placed at the Hampton Classic last year too. For those that have got really, really good sight, you might notice on the, the left-hand side of this horse's neck that he's got a kind of little indentation. And um, we call him Prophet's Thumb Mark, and it's supposed to be lucky. Fun fact. Sarah making a very good job here. Ah, oh, that was such a shame. But again, you know, fast forward fault round could still pick up some prize money here. 76-08 finishes up on the four. Just one rail coming down today for Sarah. Heading back over to Facebook Live. Uh, Dana is watching in Waynesboro. Says good luck, everyone. And says, got my phone on the dash and watching while I make a grain run. I'm sure that's very safe, Anne. I'm positive. Hopefully it doesn't get too exciting. I don't want you to have an accident. I'll try and remain calm. Uh, Inga, I hope I pronounced that right, watching. Uh, saying good evening in Belgium. Karen's watching in Quebec in Canada. Uh, Angela watching in Spain. Uh, and Vicky's with us from a cold Denmark. Do keep warm, Vicky. Kama Godek with us now. Connie, 409. Done a lot of national competitions together, this partnership. And then she was producing the horse up. We've seen her jump the horse at World Cup level. Had a good two star speed win at Bromont last year. Whoa. You could see Kama having to work a little bit hard down that distance. She was using that. That right rein and just trying to, you know, get everything contained, energised, get the, the distance. There's a lot going on down to that oxer. And Camo was really trying to work every single stride down there, but it just didn't quite work out. Um, and, you know, having a refusal in a competition like this really does mean that the rest of the round becomes academic. There'd be no way to, to pick up any prize money with the number of starters and the, you know, the sort of partnerships we're going to see come through here today. Ah. Oh. Ah, second disobedience on course. It is going to be elimination there for Kama. Sadly, not her day. 
So we stay on the two clears, Will Simpson, Coco Faith, both representing the home nation and both clear at this stage. Addy says, how tall are those fences? He's watching on Facebook Live. This is a, a 1 meter 50 competition. So the majority of the course will be set at 1 meter 50. Oxers are, are 1 meter 50 and, and quite wide. Also, if you're watching on um, Facebook Live, you might notice as well, there's a couple of uh, people posting different links saying that you can you know, watch this show and, and, and different show on those links. They are scammers. Please don't click on them. The only way to watch this competition is on FEI TV, Clip My Horse, YouTube and Facebook. There's a lot of ways to watch, but they don't relate to anything anyone else is posting with different links in the comments. Don't click on those. On track at the moment, though, is Chloe Reed. Chelsea 179 is her ride. She has been so consistent with this horse this year. We've seen her, you know, in three-star competition, up to five-star competition in Wellington. Chloe doing a great job this weekend. It's her family that actually owns this venue. And she's very heavily involved with the, the organisation and the management, which obviously happens, you know, months and months ago. That's when it starts. But it, it, it continues right to the very horses left and then after that as well. So to be able to balance being involved with the organising committee here and riding at this level as well it takes a lot of, you know, determination, ability, and it's a real testament to her, really. And the crowd right behind her here. It's a real community event, this, and the whole community really do come out to support every single rider. Oh, come on. Wait. Wow, straight. Nicely done. 73-39. Nice clear there from Chloe Reed and Chelsea. So they have qualified and they will be back for that jump off against the clock. We are up to three now, three clears. Chloe Reed, Coco Faith, Will Simpson, all safely through. And that horse of Chloe's, boy, it can jump. Chelsea has all the scope in the world. It's one of these horses that says, you know, put them another three holes higher, mum, and I'll still keep coming down to them. Having a quick look over on YouTube Live, Merkel says, what kind of show jumping is this? Competing for the clock again like yesterday. Uh, no, this is a different format today. So this is a jump off competition. So one first round, you've got to be clear and within the time allowed. Um, and then all those clears come back for a jump off. Any more questions though on YouTube Live, do stick them in the comments box and we'll get round to them after we see Katie Dynan's round with Dijon Teron Z. Home Nation well represented here. Katie also riding for the USA. But a lot of success, this partnership. We've seen them finish top six at four-star level in Wellington already this year. They competed in top six in the WEF Challenge Cup. We've seen them at five-star level. Jumped so well at Toronto last year. Traverse City, they were third in the Grand Prix there. Such a nice horse. And really suits Katie, this one. They got on well together. Katie's got an exciting string of horses at the moment. If you've been following the Longines FEI Jumping World Cup North American League, you'll remember Katie from, from Washington. She won her first World Cup ever there. It was quite the night. She might still be celebrating, actually, from that one. <laughs> but she does a great job. Come on, Katie. Let's get you through as well. Oh, look at that final fence. She looks back. She can't quite believe it. That was such a shame because, you know, foot perfect all the way around. And she was right there with that horse. It was a real team effort all the way around there. And then just catches that final fence. So finishes up on the four, 73, 59 and four there for the USA's Katie Dynan. Hi to Shirley Love watching in Maine. Sarah's watching in Portugal. That is quite warm in Portugal. ES says, good luck, everyone. Hope to see nice riding here from Sweden. Watching in Sweden.
be great to have so many of you getting involved here on Facebook Live, on YouTube Live. Again, if you're on Facebook, hit the share button. Share it to groups. Tag your friends. The more, the merrier. Because we've still got 16 left to see here in the first round. We've still got an exciting jump off to come. And we don't want to leave you out as well. If you are watching on FEI TV and Clip My Horse, which is the only place you'll be able to watch the World Cup tomorrow, um, unless it's live on TV where you are. Oh, and don't forget, you can watch it on uh, the highlight show. They're going to be on TV as well later this week. Check out your local listings. But if you are watching today on um, FEI TV or Clip My Horse and you want to get involved with the conversation, uh, you can send me a quick message on Instagram. Just search for Adam Cromarty on there. Send me a message. I've got my phone sitting here. I'll keep an eye on that as we continue on through this first round. Judy's cheering on from Panhandle in Florida. Angela says, fantastic jumping. And another couple of those dodgy links being posted as well. Again, don't click on any of the links that say, you know, there's another live stream to watch within these comments. They are scammers. Please don't give your credit card information or anything like that. Stay with us. Watch through Clip My Horse. Watch on YouTube. Watch on Facebook. And now watch Simon McCarthy and Gotcha, Horse for Ireland here. This is the man that rode to victory here with us yesterday. This is a horse with a lot of energy, really keeps Simon on his toes. But it's one that Simon's had the, the pleasure of riding for a few years now. They've had a lot of success all the way up to five-star level during their partnership. And they've had wins together as well. You know, we've seen them have victories at places like Traverse City. That was just last summer. But yeah, Simon knows the horse very well. Doing a good job out there. Oh, Tries to make a little correction there, catches the, the front bar. And now, of course, just got to get reorganized around that corner. Still just on the four, though. And it really is a great partnership. That horse has all the ingredients you would want. But today ends up on the four, 71.56, four there for Ireland, Simon McCarthy and Gotcha. <laughs> having a quick look, oh, start that again, having a quick look back over at YouTube. Hi to Nancy watching in a cloudy, springy, 50 degree day in Maine. And Monique says hello from sunny, snowy Boulder, Colorado. I mean, today I wouldn't mind if it was slightly cooler, but that's because I'm from the UK. I'm from Scotland and this tropical weather it is an amazing day for, you know, lying at the beach. But I have to say, though, we have got this nice little breeze uh, and it's really helped conditions out there. Because the heat's nice, but having that little breeze just makes such a difference. But it's about 26 degrees Celsius here, which would be 79 degrees Fahrenheit. But the humidity is 61%, and I think that makes it feel a little bit warmer. Be it Manly, next to go. One of the very best in the world. Another Olympian, a man who's got Olympic medals. And this is uh, Chatrian Prinoir. Winners of the five-star speed final at Washington International last season. This horse is amazing because in the barn, just super chilled. You know, really a perfect horse. Loves her job, loves to do the right thing. As soon as she comes into the ring, you can see that kind of blood and energy coming up. And it's just the right amount. But yeah, it just makes everything look so smooth on the way around there. Oh, catches that plank. That's such a light plank. I don't know if you could see how kind of narrow it was. And they do sit on completely flat cups. So all you have to do is breathe on those and they, and they come down. But at the moment, fast four fault round is good enough for fourth place. So depending on the, the horse you're on, it is worth just keeping that leg on, keep moving forward. 
fastest four foot round we've seen, 71.56. So Viat's going to be a little bit steadier than that. Finishes up on four, 75.70. But although that's frustrating not to see them come back for the jump off, what we will see is that partnership, I would imagine, tomorrow. I haven't seen the start list for the Longines FEI Jumping World Cup that's taking place here tomorrow, but that's got to be a partnership we'll see. Sammy says it's partly sunny and just above freezing where she is. And yes, who's in Sweden says there's a bit of a snowstorm. When I left the UK a couple of days back, it was pouring with rain. So it's quite nice to be here in the sunshine, but I do have to go back tomorrow night, back to the rain, sadly. Once again, a huge thank you for everyone who is getting involved with the conversation on Facebook, on YouTube. We're going to get Anna Christina Grand Sauer underway next with a horse called Daydream. 16-year-old, this horse. Nice gelding by Zento. <laughs> it's got some heartbreaker lines in there as well. This is a combination we saw at the Pan American Games last year. And Jimmy Toronto and Ben Mayer have ridden this horse in the past. This is a horse with a a great start, a great foundation, and now it's so nice to see Anna making a nice job as well and just continuing this horse's education. So three clears at the moment. And I just really trying to protect that delicate plank. Well, catches that that rail. You can see Anna really trying to take a little check, and when she does, you know, the horse just goes a little bit hollow sometimes. We'll see where the four fault rounds are going to end up when we get towards the end of the competition. At the moment, though, as I said, they're still in the mix. They're still in the placings. Uh, just the four, 75.05 and four faults into sixth place for now. Still just on the three clears of Will Simpson, Coco Faith and Chloe Reed, all for the United States of America. Elias watching on YouTube says, hello, am I late? You are a little bit. I mean, we've already jumped 10 horses, but we've still got about 13 left and a good jump off to come as well. Yeah. Having a look down through that start list, Sean Jobin still to come. He's been on great form. Zoe Conter's got an amazing string. Rennie Dittmer, of course, we've saw a lot of success with. Aaron Vale, one of the big names in US show jumping. All still to feature here. And of course, you can never rule out this man, Andre Tima, next to join us with Cardani PS. This is a horse that's still moving up the levels a little bit, but just so promising. And Andre, an Olympian, great horseman, great rider, rides here for Germany. What an education he's given this horse. He's been campaigning at other venues here in Ocala and has been picking up top six finishes all over the place. He just makes it look so quiet and so smooth. He's got a very good eye for a distance, as you'd expect from someone who's represented his country at the highest level. But as soon as he lands and there's a related distance there, he can make those little adjustments just to ensure he gets there, you know, on a stride that's usable. Yes, nicely done. 77 seconds is the time. Clear there. Andre Tima for Germany. Cardani PS goes through. 
four clears now. Three for the USA, now one for Germany, earning a place in that jump off against the clock. That was a super job there. Can't wait to see them jump off because they're going to be quick for sure. I don't want to jinx them, but this should be one to watch. Daniel Coyle, 14 year old by Chippendale Z called Legacy. Legacy has been out on the European circuit just a few weeks ago, won the World Cup in Leipzig, won the World Cup the following week in Amsterdam. Daniel currently ranked number 14 in the world. And this pair ranked the fifth jumping combination in the world. And that just goes to show they know the consistency that they've been having. And let me tell you, if we can get Daniel through to the jump off, you won't find anyone that has got more guts that can turn, you know, tighter than Daniel. I don't think anyone out there exists. He will be in it to win it if he gets through. And what hours this is. You can see him really working, containing that energy down towards that tiny plank. Same here, he's really protecting the more, you know, delicate fences or the, the front rails on those oxers. Oh, using that upper body. Very gymnastic through there. Come on, one to come. This is going to add the pressure on in the jump off. It's a clear round for Ireland, 73-72. Daniel Coyle and Legacy earns that place. We'll be back a little bit later. Five clears we are now up to. 11 left to come here in this first round. Hi to Kara, who has just sent me a message to say she is watching it in Nigeria. Just sent me a message on Instagram. Don't forget, if you're watching on Clip My Horse or FEI TV and you can't use the comments box because there isn't one, um, you can still send me a message on Instagram. Just search for Adam Cromarty on there. Um, and yeah, drop me a message. I'll keep an eye. More of your comments and good luck messages on the way. There's plenty of good luck messages coming in today for these athletes, actually. It's nice to see. Uh, Lucas Porter now with Kentucky. Lucas representing the USA in a horse that he joined forces with in 21. And when Lucas saw this horse, it was in an amateur competition he saw him in. He actually thought the horse was a little bit older because he was just so relaxed and has such an amazing character for a young horse. But he's got so much scope, so much quality, and I think Lucas must have big high hopes for this one. We've seen them jump all over Europe. Placed well in the, the young horse competitions. The horse is now nine years of age and, you know, really starting to move up, but not going to be their day, just catching that, that plank. A couple have done it. And it's quite a technical line. There's a lot going on. You know, you come from that, that power question before, then you're already thinking about that kind of left-handed dog leg into the fence. But... What an exciting horse this is. It's got a real good brain. It's got a great attitude. This is going to be a good one for the future, for sure. Such a shame. 76 68 there. Lucas Porter in Kentucky N will finish on four faults. Just having a quick look at, at the YouTube live chat, and Nancy says, Is there a place to see real time standings online? You are in luck, Nancy. If you head to a website, longinetiming.com, longinetiming.com, 
remember on Longjean there's a, a silent S on the end. Um, but yeah, head along there. Uh, there's a few different events that they're doing this week, but obviously pick Live Oak, pick the day, and then you'll see the live competition. And you can see the start list, the live scoring, the course plan, loads of fun stuff on there. So do head across to longjeantiming.com. Lost NTX says, I'm late, so getting caught up. We'll get you caught up, it's fine. We've got nine starters left, we've got five clears, and we've seen some great ones so far. There's some good ones to come, but you haven't missed a jump off, and that's going to be super exciting. So you're kind of in time. We'll let you off. Uh, right, Summerhill with us now, and on course, Olympic van der Nerdhovel for the United States of America. Tal Milstein's ridden this. We've seen Daniel Blumen ride this in the past. Fairly new ride for summer. Been shown them internationally since January. But their first show together, it was a two-start. They went out, they finished top six in the welcome. And then we've seen them in some three-star Grand Prix already and again finished top six. So certainly been very consistent so far in their time together. Whoa, really having to take a check down there. Ah. Thought she was going to get away with it for a second. It just didn't manage to quite catch that back bar. Just came down. And see the horse has quite a lot of blood and kind of says, let me at them, mum. And Summer has to really use that upper body and take a check sometimes just to keep the, all that energy in the, the back end and keep the front end nice and light. Nice. Oh. Well, again, has to just take a check to the last. Finishes up on the four, 75, 83. Four faults there for Summer, heads into 10th. Remember in FEI competition, there's at least 12 cash awards, 12 placings in any FEI competition. Even if there's only five entries, there still has to be 12 cash awards. And I won't bore you with how the rest of the prize money is reallocated, unless anyone wants to know. Um, but yeah, in this one, there's 12 today. And we've got all the clears in there and all those on four. That's who's making up our top 12 at this stage. Jack says they've got four feet of snow in Wyoming. Wow. Must be pretty chilly. Arcuga next to go. Sean Jobin in the saddle of this one. Sean's based in Ocala. Also spent some time, though, in Columbus, Ohio. This is a nice horse. It's by Arco III. It's got some beluga lines in there as well. Had a good win at Caledon last year. But Sean's got a couple of nice horses at the minute. And he's been placing well with them. We saw him crown the Canadian national champion at the Royal Winter Fair in Toronto during their opening weekend of competition. Sean's another one that'd be very competitive in the jump off. Well, let's see if we can get him through. Nicely through there, down to the last, plenty of time as well. Oh, but catches the final fence. He could feel that coming. Four faults, 70.34, <laughs> just the one rail. Four there for Sean Jobin and Arcuga representing Canada. <laughs> That was a real shame. Flipping back over to the YouTube live chat uh, and hello to BSJA with Imogen now watching. Catherine Wright, she says, unlucky. It was so unlucky there for Sean. And I have to say the YouTube chat is much more um, interactive than, the, the, than the, the one on Facebook. Facebook, guys, you've got to get better. You've got to be telling me where you're watching from. You've got to be asking questions. The guys on YouTube are, are beating you at the moment. Get involved. Joking aside, though, great to have everyone keeping me company as we get through the start list here. And Alex Matz is our next on that start list. He's got Junior Cannon in this one. Okay. 
Alex runs Vintage Farms out of Pennsylvania, also in Florida. This is a pair that have been placed a lot at this level. He's had the ride for about a year now. He's just keeping that nice, quiet rhythm, but it's also very active as well. And that's really what you want. You know, you want the horse to be thinking forward all the time. Even when you want to, you know, slow down and, and contain things a little bit, their brain's still got to be active and still thinking forward. And I think that's what we're seeing with this one. seen a lot of unlucky combinations here. Oh, the last one comes down as well to jump all the way around and then just take the final couple of rails. That was a real shame for Alex, but very exciting horse for him called Junior Cannon. On a YouTube live chat, Crispy Krem says, what apps or websites can we watch the FEI Championship live tomorrow? FEI Jumping World Cup is on FEI TV and clip my horse. Now, it's also available on television as well, but it depends where you're watching from. You'll have to check your local listing. Look at the, the sports channels. Um, it is live in some places, but even if you can't catch it live tomorrow, even if you don't have Clip My Horse, but you do have sports channels, then there will be highlights programs on later in the week. Again, look at your local listings, give it a search, um, and also keep an eye on the event social media. Search for Live Oak International. I'm sure they'll be posting um, when the TV highlights is on. I'll be joined uh, by Katie Stazak for that one. But we will be live tomorrow for that. So do join us if you can. Uh, right, Zoe Conter, Tombola Z next for Belgium. What a string of horses she's got. Part of the, the Steph X family, of course. We've seen her at regional championships with this horse in the past. Winner of the, the welcome here at Live Oak as well. And last year they put in su such solid performances pretty much every time out. So it's great to see her, her 24 campaign off to a good start. This is a Zanger side mare by Tulin. Ah, oh, catches that front rail. Inga's watching on Facebook Live saying, come on, Zoe. We were right behind her because she's got such an amazing string of horses at the moment and she's been doing so well. That was surprising to have a couple of rails already. Inga also says she wants, their, wants the sun that we've got over where she is. Her daughter's got her first jumping tomorrow uh, outdoors and it's rainy and 10 degrees. We'll wrap up warm and tell her we all said good luck. But Zoe's such a class rider to watch. Very balanced, got a very secure lower leg. And that's something that's so important. You know, if you watch any of the top riders, their lower legs are always just so secure. And that takes a lot of work. But keep an eye on that name. You can see the disappointment. She knows how special that horse is. They were in with a real shot today. But sadly, that's the world of show jumping. Some days you're up, some days you're down. Finishes up on the eight there, 75-88. Ingrid just joined us on YouTube watching in Spain. Eventing with Grace says, hey, hey, back at you, Grace. Jess Coletto next to go, making her final preparations. Coming forward as one of the, the final five or six here in the first round. They've already been out jumping internationally this year. She was jumping five stars down in Wellington. Finished top ten there last month. This pair were there having their first international competition experience together last November at the National Horse Show in Kentucky. Ah. I think that's maybe the first one to take that rail. Maybe the second one. 
But that one's all about the turn. You know, the fence itself, very jumpable. But it's all about that, that turn back into it. And that's the question there that's been set by Olaf Peterson, our course designer. And I think Ollie, our course designer, has done a, a, just a great job. You know, it's very achievable, this course. He gave them a, enough time. The time allowed, if anything, is just a touch loose. And that's because there's a little bit of technicality out there. There's a lot of connected lines. You know, sometimes when you're in these big open grass arenas, uh, the lines and stuff aren't quite as connected. But he's given them a good degree of technicality, but enough time to answer the questions. Jessica just having to work a little bit hard at times. If you had to pick one word, I think it would be rhythm for this partnership. You know, you would just want a bit more of a, a consistent rhythm all the way around. So you just kept that nice, even canter. Jessica just had to work a little bit, a bit hard in there and ends up finishing on eight faults. 77, 29 there for the USA's Jessica Leto and Minstrel. We've got five clears at the moment. Daniel Coyle, Andre Tima, Chloe Reed, Coco Faith and Will Simpson. All coming back for that jump off against the clock. A lot of people now talking about Spruce Meadows on YouTube Live. I'm obviously there all summer and then back for their Masters tournament. It's one of my favourite outdoor shows to go to, apart from this one, of course. Um, and they're talking about the Derby on there as well. That Derby course has actually changed now. They don't have the big bank, but a lot of the other original uh, elements are are still very much involved there for the Derby. So we look forward to seeing them back this year as well. Anyway, Rennie Dittmer with us now. Burlington Riverland representing Germany. This is a, a partnership we saw at the Washington International Horse Show last year. What a show he had. Won the, the opening competition there. Five-star level. Won the Hampton Classic. Five-star there as well. Chloe actually, as his partner Chloe Reed, used to show this horse. Rennie took over the ride, but she might be asking for him back because this horse is just superb. But Rennie does such a, a nice job, and I'm sure Chloe enjoys watching him as well. And great that they get to you know take part in this sport together. But again, you know, four faults still in the mix there, and we've only got four left. So if you do have a rail. In this competition, depending on what your plan is, it's definitely worth getting your leg on, trying to be one of the faster fours and pick yourself up some prize money. Take a little check down to the last. We'll finish up on four, so let's look at the time, see where he goes. 77, 65. Ah, just outside the top 12, so won't be picking up any placings today, but what a horse, what a partnership they are, and it was amazing to see them at Washington last year. Foot perfect. Sadly, today, though, we'll finish up on the four faults. So staying on the five clears at the moment, not many left to come here in this first round. Exciting jump off to follow, though. Hi, Talisa Malstrom says hello from Sweden. The night is saved when I realised this was live. Well, great to have you with us, Lisa. Luis Sabino Goncalves next for Portugal. Victor Cruzzi. Luis based here in Ocala nowadays. Great rider, though. Always prepares these horses fantastically well. Does a lot of no stirrup, no saddle work. He's got great natural feel, good balance, and he's had this one for years. You know, they've had so many wins together, both nationally and internationally. Horse quite naturally quick across the ground, very light on her feet, and makes the turns look quite easy. And all those things would be perfect if they can get a qualification for the jump off. A little bit sticky there. So he's going to use the space now, get organized. What? And you can see him now just using the upper body, taking a check. having to work a little bit harder than normal over some of these fences but they do come at you quite quickly so there's not really a lot of room to you know spend time getting prepared and getting ready
But he's leaving them up. Lost a shoe there. I don't know if you guys could see that on, on screen as he came over that fence, the, the sort of shoe rolled away. Luckily, he doesn't have too many turns left. Obviously, when you're jumping, ah, just about to say, you know, luckily when you're jumping on on grass, you do need those those studs to help with a little bit of traction, or corks as they're called here. And when you lose a shoe, that can have an impact. So we didn't have any turns there, but perhaps just losing that shoe did kind of unbalance things a little bit. That was a shame, though, because he just rode every single stride in there today. But in the end, we'll finish on the eight faults. 73.90, and that means we stay on five clears at this stage. Five clear at the moment, and just three left to go here in this first round. Got some quick ones through, though. Daniel Coyle, Andre Tima, Chloe Reed, Coco Faith, Will Simpson... We've got the USA, Germany, and Ireland already going through for that jump off. And now Aaron Vale joins us. This horse only did his first National Grand Prix two months ago, and now here he is, jumping a four-star with us at Live Oak International. And Aaron, what an amazing string he's got at the moment. We saw him with a couple of long-time rides recently, Prescott and Obi-Wan. Now nice to see him bringing the younger horses through as well and producing them up through the grades. I mean, he'd be one of the one of the crowd favourites as well. You can see this horse has got a nose net on and they're good for horses that are a little bit sensitive to, you know, dust and pollen or a little bit head shaky. Those nose nets can just make such a huge difference. That was great riding down there. Aaron was so reactive. He's really helping this horse out, giving the horse a great education. Remember, this is a slightly younger one. It's just eight years old, this horse. So, you know, starting to kind of debut at this level. But Aaron just, you know, really just being horseman first, rider second almost, really looking after these horses, giving them a, a good education. Slightly annoying when your nose net flicks up, though. <laughs> you see he's a very relaxed, calm eight-year-old. Come on, Aaron. Yes, jumps the last. He's through 75 73. Aaron Vale and Styles there for the United States of America. One of the local athletes earning a place in that jump off against the clock. And what an exciting young horse. Eight years of age, cool as a cucumber, putting in a great performance and earning a clear here. Two combinations left to come forward in this round. Then we've got that jump off. Six already qualified for that. We might just see one more. We will wait and see. But what a young horse. You could just see how athletic and scopy Aaron's horse was. Alexandra Crown and Dumont joining us as our next to go here. Judy Burns already on Facebook Live saying, Yay, Aaron. Absolutely. This is a horse that Alex has ridden quite a lot in the Netherlands and Belgium last season. Holsteiner Gelding by Diorado. A bit close to the oxer, so then just has to work to the vertical. You can see her bringing that right shoulder back, left shoulder forward around that turn, keeping her shoulders parallel with the horse's shoulders. Whoa, now she'll have to work for the oxer. Oh, got away with it. It's still up. Can she get over this one as well? 
then she has a bit of time to regroup and rebalance, reorganize. We know the time allowed's not that tough. Come on. Oh, she's having to work in there today. But she's been quite reactive. Nicely over the oxer. One to come. Ah, oh, the final fence. The last one comes down. 77-45 and just a four there for Alex and Damon for the USA. You can see her giving her horse a nice big pat as she heads out there. What a frustration though. Just one coming down. The last fence falls. And just one left to come here in this first round. Exciting jump off to follow as well, of course. Oh, here we go. Last to go here in this first round. Kamigodek. New ride for her, Sanino B. First international together was at Washington at the end of last season. Already had a top 12 finish at three star level quite recently, though. This is a gelding by Kador 5. Catches that rail. Oh, it's a little bit flat through there. Again, these lines very connected. So now Camel use this corner, this roll back turn. So sits on eight at the minute. We know it will just be six that head through to that jump off against the clock. has got a couple of nice horses at the moment actually remember this is quite a new pairing so still kind of getting to know each other a little bit been riding in some different rings together but today the total will be 20 for Kamigodex and you know B 80 seconds the time and 20 faults puts them into 20 seconds well that is the end of this fresh round Clear rounds definitely had to be earned today. There was plenty of tests out there. It was a meaty course. As I mentioned earlier, Olaf Peterson, our course designer, certainly gave them enough time. The time allowed not too tight in here because he knew that there was good a good level of technicality out there too. Right, we are getting set for that jump off against the clock now. We can see those that are heading through. Will Simpson... Coco Faith, Chloe Reed, and Aaron Vale for the United States of America. Then for Ireland, we've got Daniel Coyle in there and Andre Tima for Germany. So that's those riders that have jumped clear here in the first round of competition. Jump off against the clock to come, but who's your money on? Again, if you're watching on Facebook Live or YouTube in the comments box, let me know who you think it's going to be. We've got Will Simpson, Coco Faith, Chloe Reed, Andre Tima, Daniel Coyle, and Aaron Vale. That's the athletes that are heading through. Who do you think is going to rise to the top and take the victory here in this Live Oak International jump off competition here this afternoon? Remember, as well, if you are watching on Clip My Horse or FEI TV, great to have you guys along as well. And if you want to get involved, just search for me on Instagram, Adam Cromerty. Search on there uh, and you can drop me a message and again, let me know who you think is going to take that victory. Inga's right off the off the start blocks there and going with Andre Tima. Certainly couldn't rule, rule him out for sure.
but we know we've got some very quick ones coming through there. We know it's going to be fast. And you can see the, the team here already springing into action and getting set and ready for that jump off against the clock. He'll be moving out some material. And that can be, you know, one of the things you want to keep an eye on as well, because when you're riding in a class like this and you walk the course prior to the first round, you don't then get to come back in and walk for the jump off. So you always have a look at the at the jump off course when you're in there to walk for the first round. But then if you qualify for the jump off, you probably come back and just have another look while everyone else finishes jumping in round one. But you also want to have a quick look as well if you can, um, you know, before before you come in after the course designers have made those changes because quite often they will move quite a lot of jump material and sometimes you can plan to make a kind of sneaky turn behind somewhere and you come in and you find there's now a little island there or you know the jump's been moved and there's now this wide open space and there's actually a tighter turn or so quite often you know when there's not much time between rounds you'll see the riders come in and while they're waiting for the bell or while they're using that 45 second countdown they'll just have a quick quick round they'll remind themselves of the track and where they're going but they're also looking at what material has been removed and if there's any little new spaces um, that, you know, have have opened up. Hi to Nancy Rivers on YouTube Live. She thinks it's going to be Daniel and Legacy. I don't know. It's going to be tough, isn't it? Because he comes second last to go. And if he leaves them all up, I'm not sure anyone could catch Daniel and Legacy. We know how competitive Aaron Vale is. But remember, he's got an eight-year-old horse coming forward into this one. Uh, Andre Tima, he's got a 10-year-old that is very quick, so don't rule him out either. Chloe Reed's been on fire. Hers slightly younger again at nine years old. Will Simpson's on a nine-year-old. Coco Faith's Harley D. We've seen that pop in some good performances as well. So, yeah, it's going to be an interesting one for sure. Eddie Stobart's watching on Clip My Horse. Just sent me a message. Good to have you with us, Eddie. Going to be an exciting jump off. And it'll be on the way here in just a few moments' time. Don't forget as well, tomorrow, the Longjean FEI Jumping World Cup North American League available to watch on Clip My Horse on FEI TV. And then look out, of course, for the highlight programs that will be on television around the world. So do search your local listings for that one as well. Crispy Krem says, I think Aaron Vale and Styles are Daniel and Legacy. That's a good, good two to pick. Edge in your bets there, going for two. Great to have everyone getting involved with the conversation on YouTube and Facebook. And, of course, sending me a message as well on Instagram. Again, you can search for Adam Cromercy on there if you want to do that. Uh, Vera says, Daniel Coyle will be hard to beat. Uh, Rosie agreeing. Daniel Coyle. Love an Irishman, says Rosie. I'll let him know. Inga says, the Irish are very good. They have super youth riders. Oh, they definitely do. And so many of them now making a base for themselves here. You know, Daniel technically would be based, their, their main base um, is up in Canada. But that, that team at La Florian Farm, uh, Ariel Grange, of course, leading, leading that crew um, as Daniel's owner. Uh, I've just bought a place down here in Ocala. So they're spending a lot of time down here. But yeah, final preparations being made out there. Olaf we'll Peterson, our course designer, is the one right up at the kind of top of your screen with the, the hat on, walking down towards the, the Longjean FEI Jumping World Cup branding. He's got a great team of assistants out there as well. And they always got a nice crowd down here. It's a very horse area. A lot of people heavily involved with the with the sport, um, and also with driving horses as well. You know, we've got carriage driving here, top level international carriage driving. They had their marathon earlier today, so it's always quite a busy day on a Saturday here. Lisa Malstrom says, "Adam, how's it going with my podcast? It's going very well, Lisa. Thanks for asking." Um, it's sometimes tough when we're on the road to to try and remember to to, to fit one in, but. Um, I did one last week with Amber Marshall. Uh, for anyone that watches a program called Heartland, it's uh, a Canadian uh, drama that involves horses. Um, and it's available to watch on Netflix in most places now, I think. Uh, but yep, did one with her 
um, a few weeks, or last week, week before. It was quite recently. Um, and of course also did one uh, with Gabriella Rutter, who was in the class earlier on today. So if you want to search for Under the Saddle, if anyone wants to have a listen, um, you can check that out there. Available on all podcast output channels, and um, that one with Amber is also on my YouTube channel as well. But the crowd know they're in for an exciting jump off here this afternoon. They're having a bit of a refreshment. They're getting ready. And then they're going to be on the edge of their seats. Uh, Catherine says, Daniel Claus, who I'm cheering for mostly because he shows a lot at Thunderbird. It's a great venue, Thunderbird. I haven't been for a while. Uh, it's just outside Vancouver for anyone that's not been there or heard of it before. Catherine says it should be 3 o'clock in Florida. It is. It's 3 o'clock here. Wherever Ingrid is, it's eight o'clock at night. And Anne Marie says it's eleven a.m. where she's from. So there we go. How fascinating are the time zones? Kind of. Rosie Matthew says she's going for Daniel. She loves the Irish accent. It's almost as good as the Scottish one, Rosie, isn't it? Uh, Jen Dickinson's watching in New Mexico, watching on YouTube Live. Lost NTX says it's 1 p.m. in New Mexico. Crispy Creme says in Tennessee it's 2 p.m. I'm not even sure how we got around to talking about time zones. Ingrid says hello. Good to have you watching, Ingrid. Anyway, back to this jump off. Oh, Catherine getting in saying it's noon in BC, Canada. I think we've covered pretty much every time zone now. Uh, this is our start list. Will Simpson's going to get us underway. Then we'll have Coco Faith, Chloe Reed, Andre Tima, Daniel Coyle, and Aaron Vale. Six partnerships coming back to fight it out against the clock. Don't forget, they retired in the same order as they jump clear. So the ground jury are actually involved with the, the show secretary. They do the drawn orders the night before for these classes. So they are completely randomized. Um, and then in a format like this where we have a jump off, they do retain that draw. So they come back in that same order. And Will Simpson would normally be, you know, one of the ones to look out for. And I don't think you would rule him out today. Obviously, he's on a slightly younger horse. But nine years old now and at this level, you know, you're starting to, to build up a bit of consistency. But they're just making their, their final preparations. You could see them just making his way up from the warm-up. They've got a lot of space to warm up here. Nice big grass warm-up. Rosie said it's 8.02 on Sunday morning in New Zealand. The Irish accent's way better than the Scottish accent. I'm almost offended, Rosie. Almost. Uh, Gail says it's 9 p.m. in South Africa. I can't believe we've turned time zones into a conversation. But we have. We've done it. But any second now, we're going to see that gate go up. And we are going to see the first combination come forward to join us. Remember, coming in as the pathfinder, you want to try and put on as much pressure as you possibly can for those to come after you. And Will knows, you know, towards the end of the six, there's some pretty fast ones that are going to be biting at his heels. Lisa's asking how old Andre's horse is. It's a 10-year-old Cardani by Belou de Reventon. And here comes Will. Will Simpson. He's going to be our pathfinder. He's going to get us underway. He's got the nine-year-old gelding by Grand Slam. Kim Minkowen. This is a horse that Will owns and rides as well. Good luck to all these riders. Got some fantastic ones through. having a little look around this is what we were talking about earlier you know they come in just remind themselves of the course look to see what material's been removed has any spaces opened up and then we're going to have a look around this jump off course 
We start in the jump off over fence number three. That's the live oak fence. From here, well, we follow the plan from the first round, round towards four, the vertical, and then rolling back tight as you like now in the jump off, trying to keep that forward momentum to the oxer at five, and then down towards six. So three, four, five, and six, all the same. Um, now we come round towards 10A and 10B. First two parts, the triple combination from the first round. Oxer in. Two strides. Vertical out. 15 is next. Pushing on round. To the pink. And then we've got one fence left. It's 12B. Second part of the double. On the long side to finish. Jumps the double clear. 38-7-3. That's the time there. Will Simpson jumps clear. Sets a standard for us for the United States of America. Gives the rest something to chase. That was a cracking round there. So 38-7-3 now, time to beat. Lisa says it's at live tomorrow too. It is live, but on Clip My Horse and FEI TV because it's a World Cup tomorrow. Might be on TV as well, wherever you are. Have a look on, you know, Eurosport and stuff. Uh, there will be highlight shows on TV around the world as well later this week. I'll be commentating with Katie Stazak for that one. Catherine says, I need to visit Thunderbird. I've been to Thunderbird on so many occasions, just not for a year or two. But the team there is just fantastic. And I love the, the merchandise. I love all the orange stuff. So I do like Thunderbird. Anyway, back to this jump off. And back now to Coco Faith. Harley D. Got to be quick. 38.73 to beat. Will did a great job. You know, again, slightly younger horse he had. I think he maybe lost a little bit of time around the turns. I think, you know, people like Daniel Coyle and Legacy seem to be able to turn so, so tight and not lose any momentum. And I have to say, Coco's doing a great job here as well. Just using a little bit more room, a bit of preparation around towards the Oxer. Oh, little rub there. Keep moving forward. 38.73 to beat. Out through 10 A and B. Two efforts left. Going to jump this. Then you've got to fly. Not going to be quite quick enough to catch Will, but putting in a solid performance here. Going to get a nice double clear. 44.30 and clear it is. Coco Faith and Harley D. So Will Simpson still leads. Coco now slotting into second place. Super job, though, there from Coco. Right, let's get Chloe Reed underway. Chelsea 179 for the United States of America. Good luck to Chloe. 38-7-3 to beat here. Chloe, a very competitive rider. Very tidy as well. Really protecting that vertical. You can see her turning her head, using those shoulders, keeping them parallel with her horse's shoulders, and keeping that leg on and allowing that forward momentum to move forward there. In over the Oxart, two strides out there. This is smooth. 38.73 to beat. One fence left. Pushes on down. Not going to be quite quick enough, but a good shot. 39.50. That'll go second for now. Chloe Reed there in Chelsea for the USA into second place. So Will Simpson leads. Chloe Reed second. Coco Faith in third at the moment. Has Will Simpson done enough? We're at the halfway stage, but look who we've got to come in the second half. Aaron Vale, Daniel Coyle, and we're about to see Andre Tima. I don't think this is over yet. Here he is, Andre Tima, Cardani. Ten-year-old horse. The 
This will give Will a run for his money. Come on, Andre. Now that was quite conservative down to the second, but very tidy through here. Wow, this horse has scope. Then opens up down towards this vertical. He's executing his plan perfectly. Horse stumbles a little bit behind. Needs to get nice and straight. Last couple of strides. Oh, catches the front rail coming in there. Now you're going to open up down towards this final fence. Finishes up on the four. 41.58 is the time. I have to say, had he not had that rail, I think that time would have been slightly less than that. Two left to come then. No change to the top three. Will Simpson still leads. Chloe Reed second. Coco Faith in third at the moment. But if you want to see how to go fast and how to turn, then watch this next combination because they are going to do both of those things and together at the same time. This is a, a very competitive combination. Daniel Coyle and Legacy for Ireland. I know a lot of people on Facebook and YouTube on the live chat have been saying that this is the combination that they think is going to take that victory. I wouldn't disagree with them, you know. I've seen Danny and this horse win so much together. Here we go. Remember, we've still got Aaron Vale to come after this, but Aaron on an eight-year-old. I think if Daniel leaves the fence he's up today, he's going to have it. But let's wait and see. See how... Ah, oh, it's gone. Well, that really has opened things up. I haven't I hadn't chatted to, uh, to Daniel this week, but I would imagine this is probably the horse he's going to jump in the World Cup tomorrow. So I think now he's had a rail... I think he's just going to be, you know, he's not going to go slow. But he's certainly not going to be going for broke now. These horses have only got so many jumps in them. And Daniel, a great horseman as well. Well, not their day. Four faults, 48-47. Again, that time would have been a lot different, I think, had he not had that rail. I think he did then steady down a little bit, thinking about, you know, future competitions. Daniel Coyle heading into fifth place there with Legacy. Will Simpson came in first to go in our jump off. He was just so smooth. I thought he'd left a door open. But he's only got one more still to come. He could have done enough. He could win it from the front because, you know, Iron Vale's very competitive for sure. But as I mentioned before, you know, this horse, just an eight-year-old, still learning its trade. Let's see. Let's see how the final chapter is going to unfold. He's last to go here in this jump off. Iron Vale in styles for the United States of America. 38-7-3, that time to beat. How is this going to unfold? This is an eight-year-old, but an eight-year-old with Aaron Vale in the irons and an Aaron Vale who's been preparing this horse, educating this horse to be very competitive. This is not over. Nicely through here. Ten seconds to get home. Jumps the vertical. Now he's going to have to push. 38-7-3. Is he going to be fast enough? Jumps the last. Ah, oh, great try. 39-44. And what an exciting young horse that is. Eight years of age by Korna Sobolenski. And heading into second place here today, Aaron Vale there for the United States of America with Styles. 
Huge congratulations though. Will Simpson wins it from the front here in our jump off with Kaminko N. 38.73, that winning time here. But you can see how much of a, a team effort it is up there on the kiss and cry for every one of these riders. Exciting horse, Aaron's got to be happy with that. Finishes up in second. Full result though, and congratulations to Will Simpson for the United States of America. Kim Minko and confirmed as our winner, Aaron Vale. We just saw him with Styles. He'll finish up in second. And then on home soil, Chloe Reed and Chelsea will take third place. Another quick reminder that we have the Longines FEI Jumping World Cup Ocala. It is here, it is tomorrow, and it's available to watch only on Clip My Horse FEI TV and also live on television if it is in your region. Check your local listings and check your local listings as well for the highlight show of the World Cup that will feature on TV around the world um, in just a few days' time. So check your local listings for that. We are getting set and ready for the prize giving ceremony here this afternoon. Great competition, though, great first round. Interesting jump off as well. A lot of people thinking Daniel Coyle was going to clinch it, but then Will Simpson comes forward on a nine year old, sets a standard, stays up at the top, and then clinches that victory. A huge thank you to everyone who's been getting involved with the conversation on YouTube, on Facebook, or sending me messages on Instagram. Always great to have you guys keeping me company. And it wouldn't be the same without you. So thank you for getting involved. Um, I'll be with Katie Stazak tomorrow. Don't forget, check out your local time as well. Head to longjeantiming.com. You'll find the timetable for the day and it will convert into your local time. And you can see when the World Cup starts. Make sure you join us for that on FEI TV and Clip My Horse. But for me, Adam Cromarty and the whole team here in Ocala, enjoy the rest of your day. We'll leave you with the ring team, Nick Brooks Ward, taking over for the prize giving. the prize giving ceremony of the Live Oak International. Many, many congratulations to Will Simpson, Kaminko N.
invited to welcome, on behalf of the FBI, the Grand Jury, Jerry Cube, and on behalf of Live Oak International, Juliet W. Reed and Chester C. Weber, who will be making the presentation ceremony. And so, may we ask you to please stand for those that are able. The winner of the Live Oak International, it is Will Simpson, Kaminko N, for the United States of America. Congratulations to Will Simpson, Kaminko, and in second place, Aaron Bell, Donna Stewart's Styles. It is a family affair. Congratulations, riding the Live Oak Plantations. Chelsea, 179. Chloe Reed. Coco Fath in fourth and Harley D. Germany's Andre team, Cordani PS. What price on this combination tomorrow in the uh, World Cup, the Longines FBI World Cup presented by Lugano? It is Daniel Coyle and Ariel Grange's Legacy for Ireland. Canada's uh, Sean Jabin and the Antrim Equestrians are Cougar. And Ireland's Simon McCarthy, the Rockridge Farms gotcha for Ireland.
Our very grateful thanks indeed, indeed to Juliet W. Reed, Chester C. Weber, and to Jerry Q. on behalf of the Grand Jury and the FBI. It is many, many congratulations. The great American that is Will Simpson, Kevin Cohen for the United States. Will Simpson. Aaron Vale, Chloe Reed, Kago Fath, Andre Team. Daniel Cole, Sean Jobin, and Simon McCarthy.